What's going on guys, it's Mr. DEBT, Joe Locke for the Money Etiquette Group, and today I kick off my series talking about dating and money. Over the next 30 to 60 days, I'm gonna be helping people make sure they find financially compatible mates. Now we know the spring season is upon us, people are in the gyms getting that belly fat down, people getting the glutes right, so they can present themselves and look as good as possible to attract the right mate. But in addition to attracting the right mate with your body, you wanna make sure you have a financially compatible mate. You wanna make sure you date people that don't waste your time or your money. You wanna make sure you don't run into people that will lower your credit score or you know you just can't build with because from a financial standpoint, they don't match your ambitions. Well, today I'm gonna help you to get better with that. And over the next 30 to 60 days, I'm gonna give you tips. And don't worry, if you're married, you're gonna get some tips that can help you too. But this is primarily for those who are single and looking. So let's begin with the first set of tips. Well, the first step is to understand yourself. Do you know who you are from a financial standpoint and embrace whoever that is, okay? If you're a person that likes people to spend things on you, be that person, embrace it. There's nothing wrong with that. If you like to spend money on other people, be that person, embrace it. This is not about the wrong and right activities and financial principles to have. This is about accepting who you are. If you're a person that's cheap, be cheap. Embrace that you're cheap. If you're a person that likes to spend on luxury, do so. If you're like a person that likes to use money to leverage relationships, embrace that's who you are. If you're a person that doesn't like that, embrace that's who you don't like to be. No matter what, I want you to embrace who you are from a financial standpoint, because if you don't do that from the very beginning, you're not going to attract the right money mates. You're going to kick the wrong people to the curb or you're going to bring in the wrong people and they won't be a good financial mate for you. And they may bring down your credit score while you're dating. So make sure you know who you are from a financial standpoint first before you start dating. All right, guys, let's move on to step two. Step one was all about yourself, understanding who you are and embracing who you are from a financial standpoint. But step two was about universal truths. Okay, and one truth, one universal truth will help you pick the right money mate when you're out here searching and single. And that truth is, you ready? People use money to gain leverage in relationships, whether dating or long-term relationships. It's just a universal truth. Okay, and it doesn't have to be good or bad. It's just about people using money to gauge things, okay? People use money to gauge interest. They wanna know if you spend $10 versus 20 versus 100, it shows how much you actually value that person's time. Some people use how much money you spend as a gauge on how much interest you have in that person. Some people look at money and use it to create personas, to say that, look, I can afford this type of lifestyle or I like to live this quality of life and if you can't get on that level, so be it. Some people use it to see if you're a person that likes to contribute to relationships or just receive. They wanna see, okay, if I spend money on this person, are they gonna spend this amount on me? Is it gonna be a, I give a little bit, you give a little bit, or I give a lot, you give a little bit, or what is the mixture? How do you respond to people People spending money on you and are you willing to spend money on others people use money as leverage and to gauge interest accept that universal truth and it'll help you to find the right money mate all right guys let's move on to step three step one was all about knowing yourself step two was about accepting universal truths that people use money as leverage in dating but step three is about asking the right questions to gain some insight on spending habits, okay? It's important that you ask the right questions because so many people ask the wrong questions and take the wrong approach when it comes to figuring out if a person is financially compatible with them in the early dating stages, okay? People are so invasive. Some people will ask about, look, what's your credit score? People will go straight into how much money you have in the account, what type of job you make, how much money do you make per year? People go right in these days when it comes to finances and they don't need to do so because that's the wrong approach that's not going to get you the information that you need but do you want to know how to get the information that you want to know do you want to know what the right questions are to ask all right here are the right questions here's the number one most non-invasive question you can ask while dating someone to get some insight on their finances and also understand if they're a good money mate okay here's the number one question how long have you lived in this area it's a very simple question, okay? And of course, this doesn't apply for those who are looking for one night stands, those who are looking for people that's coming in and out of town. I'm talking about you're dating someone that lives in the vicinity of you, okay? Lives in the same state, maybe the same city, but at least in the same state so that you can see them more frequently. This isn't a long distance relationship. If you're dating someone and you ask them in the very beginning, how long have they lived in this area? How long have they been in this area? 
That question will mean a lot to you in the long run, but it reveals a lot from a financial standpoint. The second most non-invasive question you can ask while dating to figure out if someone is a good money mate is, where have you traveled? Have you gone on vacation recently? Very non-invasive, very straightforward question. You've asked that question thousands of times on dates or even just when you're meeting someone and having conversations. But I'm gonna tell you, how often someone travels does point to their financial stability and their financial abilities. Research has shown people that have not taken a vacation in two years, people who do not travel for work, people who do not travel for leisure, usually are going through some type of financial strain. It doesn't mean they're broke, but usually there is some type of financial strain present. It could be related to children, people could be going through uh, relationship issues, people could be just simply moving, job changes, whatever the case may be, you don't try to define the reason, just understand that that does indicate some level of financial strain. Now, what does that mean to you? It doesn't mean that I'm saying don't date this person. I'm just saying if you're looking for someone that isn't going through some type of financial strain at the moment, if they say, as an answer to your question, they don't go on vacation, they haven't moved much, Understand that it doesn't necessarily mean that they have financial strain, but it is an indicator of financial strain. And it's something to keep a note of. All right, guys, let's quickly recap on the three tips to finding someone financially compatible while you're dating this spring or summer. Number one, know yourself. Again, you can't assess financial compatibility without knowing yourself first. Number two, understand and embrace the universal truth that people use money as leverage. It's a tool. It's going to happen. You do it. They do it. Everyone does it. And finally, understand the non-invasive questions that will help you if you ask them correctly to understand someone's level of financial stability and a peek at their financial capabilities. Where you've lived and how long you've lived there does matter, okay? When was the last time you went on a vacation? How often you travel does matter when you're looking at financial stability and capabilities. Creditors use this all the time. They've used it for decades because it works and it's gonna work for you while you're dating. Pay attention to these tools, use them, and I promise you, this will put you on the path to finding someone that's more financially compatible for you. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel because I will be releasing videos this week, two to three more, speaking about financial compatibility. If you're dating and you're looking for someone, I'm going to give you more tips and more clues on how to pick up on financial compatibility uh, indicators. And also, if you're in a relationship, I will be helping you out with growing financial compatibility. And guess what? I do have a complete guide to finding someone that's financially compatible and also to strengthening financial compatibility within relationships through my book, did everything but think the relationship edition. Again, did everything but think the relationship edition. This book is not just for married couples. The first half of this book is dedicated to singles and telling you how to find someone that's financially compatible, okay? I wanna help you guys out. And also, again, for those in relationship, it helps you to become and build more financially compatible relationships if you're already dating someone. So pick up a copy at Amazon or Barnes & Noble. Today, I do have an ebook and a print version. Again, it's did everything but think the relationship edition. We wanna make relationships more financially compatible and we wanna help you to find someone that's a good money maker.